This is a demonstration of a home video cassette recorder, and with one of these electronic marvels, you can record consumer survival kit even when you're not at home, and you can play it back anytime you want. These machines could revolutionize our viewing habits. The video cassette recorder, or VCR, is one of the fastest growing products on the market. Now, it took seven years for color television sales to pass the 200,000 mark. But this year alone, the industry expects to sell over half a million of these, even though they've only been on the market since 1975. Why this sudden popularity for a machine that costs close to $1,000? Here's Rhea with the answer. Well, Larry, one reason is what the industry calls time shifting. Video cassette recorders, or VCRs, let you make your own TV schedule. You can record programs when you're not home, thanks to a timer. Or you can watch one program and record another. You can even tape your own home movies with the addition of a television camera. This do-it-yourself scheduling doesn't come cheap, though. Prices for VCR start at around $800 for a single unit, and for a console unit with a television set attached, the price is around $2,400. But the high price of VCRs doesn't seem to be stopping anybody from buying them. At the moment, there are about 20 different brand names on the market. This doesn't mean that there are 20 different systems. There are actually only four. The Betamax, the VHS, the Quasar VR1000, and the V-Cord 2. The various brand names are only different versions of one of these systems. All of them happen to be made in Japan. The RCA Select Division uses the VHS system, and if you buy a Zenith, you're actually buying a Betamax, made by Sony. Unfortunately, the systems are not interchangeable, which means that something recorded on one type of machine can't be played back on another. By far, the biggest names are Beta and VHS, and most U.S. manufacturers have opted for one of these two systems. The average price these days for one of the beta or VHS brands is around $900 or $1,000. Blank tapes range from $12 to $25, and you can get anywhere from one to six hours playing time on different size tapes. So far, there haven't been any major service problems with VCRs, partly because the technology of the machine seems to be good and because they haven't been on the market very long. VCRs are more complex than a television set, and some people have trouble operating them. So, to help you with that problem, I'm going to show you how the Zenith Betamax works, and it's really very simple. The buttons here are very much like the buttons on an audio tape recorder. I'm going to push the one that says record. We have a red light here, and that indicates that the machine is in operation. There is a pause button. If you're recording something on television, you want to eliminate a part, you simply push the button, and that will eliminate the portion that you don't want to record. We have a counter over here, and inside we have a one-hour cassette. However, we can push this button, and the machine will work more slowly, and we can get two hours' worth of taping time. And really, that's about all there is to working it. We can stop it with this button and rewind it with still another button. That's it. All right, I've made my home movie for the day. Home movie of what? Of you. While you were doing this, I had Terrific. the camera pointed, and we have actually a home videotape, which we can now watch. Now, this, let me show you this camera before okay. I show you the tape that I've made with the camera. This is a black and white camera, and it's the kind of camera that you can buy for use at home. These sell for about $300 and up, but you can also buy color cameras that sell for more than the price of the VCR itself. The color cameras sell for around $1,700. Now, not all manufacturers sell color cameras, and you can't use them with all VCRs. Okay, let's see what kind of a cameraman I turn out to be. You better we'll, be good. We'll push Fire play. right on the spot. Now, obviously, the, the um, camera goes directly into the tape machine. We have a microphone here. Here's the sound. Television. You want to eliminate a part. You... There's the pause. That's the pause where I said if you That's want to right. eliminate. That's great. That's right. And, it's and that inside, we have a one-hour... That's a good picture, too. Isn't that, it certainly no, is. We can push this now, that's how we make the home video tapes. By throwing this switch, you have uh, put the machine in contact with the receiver that is inside this console, and you can tape directly off the air. It's really very simple. This particular unit doesn't have a timer, but many do. And that's all there is to it. Very simple and very good. Thanks a lot, Larry. Now, if you don't like homemade movies like the one we just did, you can buy the Hollywood variety on cassette. Prices for pre-recorded cassettes are still high. It can cost you up to $75 a movie, depending on the length. But there's still not much pre-recorded material available, even though some people in the industry had hoped that recordings of ballet, opera, plays, and movies would be plentiful. But this doesn't seem to be happening right now. 
One large electronics dealer told us most people seem to be buying VCRs to record sporting events. And there's one more element. Music Corporation of America and Walt Disney Productions are currently suing the Sony Corporation to stop further manufacture and sale of their VCR, and by extension all others, too. They claim VCRs violate copyright laws by allowing taping of copyrighted television shows or movies. Sony naturally thinks otherwise. The case is expected to drag on in the courts for some time. Meanwhile, as sales of VCRs increase, more and more television programs will be taped off the air. It's probably still too early to tell quite how VCRs will affect the television industry in the long run. But if overall sales are any indication, their arrival is exactly what TV addicts have been hungry for. Speaking of surviving, our survivor this week is Chris Hawkins of Modesto, California. In October 1976, Chris bought a tape deck made by TIAC. Now, unfortunately, the tape deck chewed up his tapes. Since the hungry tape deck was under warranty, Chris took it back to where he bought it to have it repaired. In fact, he had it repaired four times in three months. But as Chris says in his letter to us, the tape continued to be munched. He goes on, Finally, I was so exasperated that I wrote twice to the TIAC Corporation, but I got no answer. Finally, the technician told me that the factory had left out a part. It was only after the repair technician had fixed the machine that TIAC wrote back offering to extend the warranty. Chris told them he'd rather have his 10 damaged tapes replaced. Two months later, TIAC agreed. After months of hassling, Chris now has a trouble-free tape deck and has recouped his tapes. Congratulations, Chris, our Survivor of the Week.